Hello viewers, I am Kausalya. Today we are going to discuss about block diagram reduction rules. Our first one is combining the blocks in cascade. Cascade is nothing but elements in series. So here we are having two blocks. One is G1 and another one is G2. To this G1, the input signal given is A. So the output from this block G1 is just we have to multiply these two elements. So the output is A into G1. And again this output is given as input to this block G2. So again these two elements should get multiplied. So when we multiply we will be having A G1 into A that is A G1 into G2. And this is your respect to output. Right. So these two blocks can be represented as a single block where the single block consists of elements G1 into G2. So to this block whenever the input signal A is given as I already said just we have to multiply this one with the element inside the block. So A into G1 into G2 is your respect to output. Right. So here instead of having two blocks we can replace it with a single block whose value is G1, G2. That is when two blocks are in series connection we can replace these two blocks by a single block provided the elements in these individual blocks that is G1, G2 should get multiplied. So here I am writing it as G1, G2. Right. So elements in series can be replaced by a single element provided the element in the two blocks should get multiplied and written here. Right. So this is the way of combining blocks in cascade or blocks in series. And the next one is combining blocks in parallel. So here as we all know the starting point and ending point of element should be same in case of parallel connection. That is here consider G2 to this G2 the input is A and this G2 the output ends with a summer here right that is G2 starts with A and ends with summer. Similarly G1 also starts with A and ends with the same summer right. So the starting point and finishing point of these two blocks are same. That is starting point is A and finishing point is a summer. So these two blocks are said to be in parallel. Right. So here as usual here the input is A. This input is A is given to G2 as well as G1. So these two elements should get multiplied. So A into G2 is A G2 and again this A into G1 is A G1. And these two are connected to a summer here. So in this summer both the symbols are with plus sign. So just you have to add these two elements. So AG1 plus AG2 again here in these two terms A is common. So when you take A outside the remaining terms will be G1 plus G2 right. So this elements in parallel can be replaced by a single block provided these the values present in these individual blocks should get added that is G1 plus G2. So G1 plus G2 is presented in a single box here and to this block the input is again A. So the output is just you have to multiply these two elements right. So A into G1 plus G2 that's it. That is when two blocks are in parallel when we are going to replace these two blocks just add the elements present in these two blocks and represent it by a single block here. Right. Then the third one is moving the branch point ahead of the block. That is here this is your block right and this is your input A and this is your respective output A into G nothing but A G here. So here I am ta taking a branch point that is I am taking some point outwards. So this is known as your specific branch point. Now I am going to shift this branch point ahead of the block. Why here the word comes ahead? Because the flow of signal is in this direction. Right. 
the flow of signal is in this direction so i am going to move this branch point ahead of this block okay right so whenever a branch point is moved ahead of the block the element which should be included is nothing but here we are having g right i am going to move this branch point ahead of g so whenever you move a branch point ahead of this particular block g you have to just include a block with the term 1 by g that is reciprocal of g should be included here right so here in this case again here you are having a as input and the respective output is one is ag and another one is a right here also here the input is a so when you give input you, these two elements should get multiplied so the output is ag again here this is your branch point this same ag is given as input to this block 1 by g so ag into 1 by g when you multiply these two terms that is ag into 1 by g g and g will get cancel and in output you will be getting only a right here the input is a and the outputs are ag and a similarly here again the input is a and the outputs are ag and a right hope you all understand if you have any doubt let me know in the comment section right then our fourth rule is moving the branch point before the block right so this is your block and this is your respective input a so these two elements should get multiplied so the output is ag and here again i am taking a branch point same in this branch point will also have the same output ag here right now i am going to move this branch point before the block right so in order to move this branch point before the block here that is this point is moved over here so whenever a branch point is moved before you have to include the same element g in the block here that is to the branch point which is moving you have to include the element which is present over here that is to this block g i am moving this branch point right this branch point is moved before block g so in order to move this branch point before block g i have to include the same element g here in the respective branch point which i need to move right here again the input is a right and the respective output is ag and ag because the same input a is again given here so the thing is we have to multiply these two elements so a into g ag and here again a into g as ag right here i am having a input as a and output as ag similarly here the input is a and the outputs are ag right and the next one is moving the summing point ahead of the block as i already said to a summing point we should have more than one input that is we should we should have two elements either to be added or subtracted so here this is the summing point and this is our respective block to this summing point i am having two inputs one is a and another one is b as this is sum just here these are the both these input signals are with the same sign so just add a plus b so this is given as input to this block g so again these two elements need to be multiplied so a plus b into g is your respective output right now i am going to move this this summing point ahead that is i'm going to move from this position to this position right so here again just that is a block g the input is a right and the, the output from this block will be you have to multiply these two so a into g is your respect to output and the next one is you to this block b that is to the input signal b i am adding an another block right another block with the same value g so here i am adding a block with the same value g and again i am taking this output and again i am placing giving to this summer that is summer which is placed in front of this uh, block g is shifted afterwards that is it is shifted ahead so here in this case this summing point is moved that is the summing point which is present here is moved over here and again to move the summing point ahead of the block the thing we have to do is you should add a block with the same value which is present here 
So again here B into G is BG, here A into G is AG and again the summer with a positive sign just you have to add it. When you add you will be getting AG plus BG. So here in this case G is common. So when you take G outside the remaining things will be A plus B. We are having the same output as like here. Okay, this is an important thing you have to keep it in mind. Our next one is moving the summing point before the block. So here the summing point is after the block, right? So the respect to input given is A. So just multiply these two AG and again I am here simply giving an input B. So you have to add these two inputs. So output is AG plus B, right? Now I am going to shift this summing point before this block G. In order to shift the summing point before this block, the thing element you have to add is, you have to add reciprocal of this G, that is 1 by G, right. Now check, here the input is B, so just multiply these two things, the output will be B by G. And here the input is A, and this is a summer, right, so just you have to add these two elements. So when you add, you will be having A plus B by G. And this A plus B by G, here these two elements should get multiplied, right? So when you multiply, what happens? A plus B by G is multiplied by G here. So when you multiply, you will be having A G plus B by G into G. Here G G will get cancelled and the final output will be A G plus B, right? So here in this case, the output is again A G plus B and here also the output is A G plus B. Right, and the next step is interchanging the summing points. So here, interchanging the summing point is nothing but here. This is your summing point one, and this is your summing point two. Right. So here in the summing point, we are having two inputs A and B. Both are with the positive sign. So the output is A plus B. And this A plus B is given as input to this second summing point and here C is the another input. So again here A plus B is with a positive sign and C is with a negative sign. So you have to add accordingly that is A plus B minus C because C is here with a negative sign. So the output is A plus B minus C. Now what I am going to do, we are going to interchange the summing points. That is summing point 2 should come first and summing point 1 should come next. So when you consider summing point 2, right, here the input C remains as such. Here C with negative sign and here also just draw the same C with the negative sign. So here the first input I am considering is A. So here A is with positive sign and C is with negative sign. So the output is A minus C, right? And again, the, to this first summer, we are having two inputs, right? So to this first summer, the input B remains as such. So here the output is A minus C and another input to the summer is B. So just add, when you add, you will be having A minus C plus B. So when you rearrange, you can write it as A plus B and minus C, right? Here also the output is A plus B minus C and here also we are having the same output A plus B minus C. That's it. And second one, and the eighth point is splitting the summing points. That is, here I am having a single summing point with three inputs, right? A, B and C. So here A and B are with positive sign and C is with the negative sign. So when you add, you will be having A plus B minus C. This is your output, right? So here I am splitting this single summing point into two summing points. This is summing point 1 and this is summing point 2. To this summing point, I am taking only two inputs A and B, both with a positive sign. So the output is A plus B, right? And to the second summing point, I am having C as input. So the respective output is C as input and that too C is with a negative sign. So A plus B minus C. So check the output in both the cases. In both the cases, the output remains the same, right? And the next one is combining the summing points. Combining is nothing but here again, I am having two summing points. I am going to merge these two summing point as a single summing point. That's it. So here again we are having two inputs A and B with the positive sign. So the output from the summing point is A plus B. 
and this a plus b is given as input to another summing point along with the input c here. So a plus b here c is with a negative sign so I am writing it as a plus b minus c right. And the next one is here I am combining these two points as a single one so just this single summing point has three inputs right so here one is a one is b and another one is c right accordingly one is a another one is b and another one is c here c is with negative sign so again here we have to draw this c with the negative sign here so when you combine these three signals automatically you will be having a plus b minus c right so this is our ninth rule and finally the last rule is this is the most important rule which we will be using commonly while solving problems. Elimination of feedback loop. Right. So here in this case, this is the element which is present in the forward path. Okay. Well, this is the forward path. So feedback is nothing but we are taking some part of the output and we are again giving it as input here. So this is your feedback element. Right. So as I already said, R is the input here and C is the respective output. So, this output is given as input again. So, this C is given as input here. So, just multiply these two elements. When you multiply, the output will be C into H, right? And this feedback may be either positive feedback or negative feedback. Here, we are considering a negative feedback. So, here to this summer, one signal is with positive sign and another signal is with negative sign. So, just add accordingly, you will be having R with positive sign, so R minus here CH, so R minus CH. This R minus CH is given as input to this block G. So, the thing is, we have to multiply these two elements. So, when you multiply R minus CH into G, so this is your output value, right? So, I am solving the case here. So, in this case, the output C is nothing but C is equal to R minus CH into G. Right. Hope you people understand this one. So, in this case, C is equal to just multiply G inside. You will be having RG minus CH into G. That's it. So, I am moving this minus CHG to the left hand side. So, this will become a positive quantity. So, C plus CHG equal to RG. So, here in this case, C is common, right? So, just take C outside. When you take C outside, the remaining elements will be 1 plus GH, which is equal to RG. So, we always need the ratio of output to the input. Here, the output is C and the input is R. So, keep this C as such and I am moving this R here. So, this will become C by R. So, which is equal to G divided by, when you move this one that side, that becomes G divided by 1 plus GH, right. So, this feedback loop can be represented by a single block with the component G divided by 1 plus GH. Again, this is the input is R here and the output is C here, right. This is the most important thing each and everyone should know to solve a block diagram problem, right. Similarly, the next one is here, I am considering the same element but the feedback is positive. When you have a positive feedback, <coughs> the respective output is G divided by 1 minus GH. Here, the feedback is negative, so the output is G by 1 plus GH. For a positive feedback, here just reverse, so G divided by 1 minus GH, okay. And again, the input is R and the output is C. You have to keep these things in your mind. So these are all the 10 rules you must know before to before solving the block diagram reduction problems. Okay, That's all the video gets over here. If you have any doubt let me know in the comment section. Thank you.